All Christian groups share some beliefs in common, but they also hold beliefs that are distinctive as well. Now, when you compare beliefs that are held in common with beliefs that are distinctive, it tends to be the distinctive beliefs that are more controversial. The beliefs held in common just don't stir up as much opposition. And we could see this in early Adventism. So for example, take the belief of the seventh day Sabbath. Now, even though it wasn't a unique belief, it was very distinctive. And because of this belief, SDAs were often accused of being Judaizers. Another example was having a prophet. This was also something that was distinctive. And because Seventh-day Adventists believed that Ellen White was a prophet, they were accused of being a cult. And that still happens even today. Now, I would guess that if you know a little bit about Seventh-day Adventism, you're probably already aware of both of those beliefs. And if that's the case, you're likely aware of the controversy surrounding them as well. But there's another distinctive belief that was held by the pioneers that you may not be as aware of. And although this belief was foundational to the early SDAs, it's one that has been forgotten. Now, this belief was so controversial that the early Adventists were actually accused of being atheistic. Well, what was that belief, you might ask? This was the belief in materialism. The SDA pioneers accepted philosophical materialism. Again, this belief has largely been forgotten, so much so that the majority of modern Adventists are totally unaware of the pioneers' understanding and knowledge of this topic. The reason why we're making these videos is that the understanding and knowledge of materialism actually has the potential to change the world. But don't just take my word for it. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what exactly philosophical materialism is and isn't. And then by watching other videos on this channel, you'll be able to learn about what the SDA pioneers had to say in regard to it. Okay, but before we get too far, let's take a look at this quote from an early SDA named B.F. Robbins. In his article titled Materialism, Robbins says, materialism. There is scarcely a subject in the range of Bible investigation more unpopular and which excites more opposition in the professed Christian world than the subject at the head of this article. It is called infidelity and atheism, while its believers are looked upon with suspicion and contempt. A minister of my acquaintance, who a few months ago was favorable and publicly committed himself to the scripture view of death and consequent unconsciousness, retracted upon the ground that such doctrines avowed must, of course, lead to materialism. This we, of course, admit, and the other conclusion, which he also avowed we admit, that materialism is opposed and subversive of the faith of the professed Christian world, because that faith is based upon immateriality or nothing. Okay, so here we have an early Seventh-day Adventist making some pretty powerful statements about this belief, materialism. Now, if you're anything like me, in all my experience in Adventism, that term never really crossed my path, at least not in the way that Robbins is referring to it. But given the way in which he is speaking of it, it's definitely worth taking a closer look. So let's just break down what he's saying. One of the first things he mentions about materialism is that there is scarcely a subject that is more unpopular and which excites more opposition than this subject of materialism. So Robbins is saying it's very controversial. And then he goes on to say it's called infidelity and atheism, and its believers are looked upon with suspicion and contempt. So those that hold to materialism are not thought of in a real positive way. He then mentions his acquaintance, a minister who had been both in favor of and publicly committed to the scripture view of the state of the dead, the view that death leads to unconsciousness. Well, this minister retracted this belief on the grounds that such doctrines avowed, of course, lead to materialism. So he's saying the idea that death leads to unconsciousness is a materialistic idea. It aligns with materialism. It leads to materialism. Well, then Robbins openly admits 
And he actually says, we admit, so this was not just Robbins, this was the other SDAs along with him. So they admit to both of the conclusions drawn by this minister. So the first conclusion, the scripture view of death leads to materialism. So Robin says, yes, that's true. And then second, that materialism is opposed and subversive to the faith of the professed Christian world. And to be subversive means that it undermines that faith or it erodes away at its base or foundation. So materialism erodes the foundation of the professed Christian world. And why is this so? Because according to Robbins, that faith is based on immateriality or nothing. So he's saying materialism destroys a foundation based on immateriality. And his last few words are really important to take note of. Robbins is equating immateriality with nothing. So keep that in mind. Okay, so are you ready to learn more about what materialism is? Let's do it. Okay, materialism. Now, this is a common term, but it's usually understood to mean something different than what Robbins is referring to. When Robbins and the other early pioneers are referring to the term materialism in this context, they're not referring to materialism in the sense of placing high importance on material goods or possessions. They're talking about a different definition of materialism. The idea that materialism is the view that all that exists is made of only matter, physical stuff. So nothing non-physical or immaterial exists. And maybe that idea sounds pretty straightforward, easy to grasp. But in order to get a fuller understanding of what materialism is, let's look at it in contrast with the opposite view. Immaterialism. So immaterialism is the belief in the non-physical. It is the belief in immateriality. And what exactly is immateriality? Well, that can get a little tricky because in reality, immateriality cannot be defined by what it is. We actually have to define it by what it isn't. Of course, we could simply say it's not materiality, but that still doesn't really explain things as clearly as we'd like. So let's get into the details of how to define immateriality. In order to do that, let's start by looking at materiality. Materiality is simply the quality of being material, so made up of matter. And when describing matter or physical stuff, we can use material properties like size, texture, shape, mass, location, etc. Okay, so now let's go back to the term immateriality. The first thing to notice is the prefix im, the letters i and m. This is a prefix meaning no or not. So from that, we can logically conclude that immateriality is not materiality. It is not the quality of being material or made up of matter. And those that believe in immateriality believe that it does not have the properties like size, texture, shape, mass, location. Okay, so let's reflect on all that for just a minute. What would you say the difference is between something that has no size, no texture, no shape, no mass, no location, and something that doesn't exist. Is there even a difference? Let's recall what B.F. Robin says at the end of his statement, the one we just read. He says, immateriality or nothing. So he was equating immateriality with nothing. Can you see why Robbins would do this? If you wanted to describe something that doesn't exist, if you wanted to describe nothing, you couldn't do any better than saying it has no size, no shape, no mass, or any other physical properties. And notice that is the definition of immateriality. So immateriality and nothing are the same. I hope you're beginning to get a better understanding of these terms, materiality and immateriality. So now let's go on and discuss the beliefs of materialism and immaterialism. We're going to start with materialism. So materialism is the position that all that exists is made up of only matter, 100% physical stuff. Nothing immaterial or non-physical exists. So 
materialism goes beyond just saying physical stuff exists. It's a very specific belief that only physical stuff exists. This is the important point to really keep in mind here. In contrast, we can also look at it this way. Within materialism, absolutely nothing immaterial can or does exist. Zero percent. So it's all or nothing. It's zero percent immateriality and 100 percent materiality. Immaterialism, on the other hand, allows for a wide spectrum of belief. Anything less than 100% materiality is considered to be under the umbrella of immaterialism. So anywhere from 0% materiality all the way to 99% materiality. Like as we can see here, that tannish color represents materiality and then all the different amounts of belief in the material. And you could even go past the 99% all the way up to 99.9999999% material. If you hold to any amount of immateriality, even the tiniest decimal point, that is still considered immaterialism. So we'll just go through these different ranges real quickly, starting at 0% materiality. So no belief in anything material. Everything is immaterial. And then you can kind of work your way up from that. So maybe 20% materiality, which would mean 80% immateriality or 30% materiality, so 70% immateriality, 40, 60, 50, 50, 60 materiality, so just maybe 40% immateriality, 70, 30, 80, 20. And now we're really getting up there. Even the belief that 99% of reality is material and only 1% of reality is immaterial is still in the category of immaterialism. Any percentage up from here, less than 100% is still in the range of immaterialism. And this combination of belief in the material and immaterial is common for most people. In fact, this wide range of belief options that we just looked at, where there's any combination of belief in the nature of reality being partially material and partially immaterial, this is defined as substance dualism. And this is a subset of immaterialism. So substance dualism is the belief that both physical and non-physical substances exist. So dual as in two, so two different types of substances. And then there's also another subset of immaterialism, those that believe that only non-physical stuff exists. These would not fall into this dualism category, but they fall into another category called idealism, which rejects material reality altogether. But materialism holds to the very strict standard of nothing less than 100% materiality. So to be a materialist means that you believe existence is 100% materiality, absolutely nothing immaterial. Now, since materialism is the belief in 100% materiality, these two beliefs, materialism and immaterialism, are dichotomies. This means that they are mutually exclusive. Only one or the other can be held at a time. You can't be both a materialist and an immaterialist. If you are an immaterialist, then you do not hold to the belief that only materiality exists. An immaterialist holds to some portion of immateriality, no matter how great or small that portion may be. But if you are a materialist, you hold to the belief that only materiality exists 100%. Now, why is this so important? To close, I just want to leave you with one more statement from B.F. Robbins. He says, now to me, the charges against us by our opponents so tenaciously urged and repeated of infidelity and atheism come from them with an ill grace, to say the least. For certainly the light from the word of God repels these imputations from us while they recoil upon them. Honestly, do I believe that the doctrine of immateriality as taught by them and which has become so popular in the professed Christian world to be subversive of the whole Christian faith as taught in the word of God because their views are not even professedly based upon a literal interpretation of that word, but upon a mystical or spiritual interpretation. 
and thus their views become a mere conjecture, things of mere fancy and imagination without any foundation for faith or sure ground for hope. So being a materialist, Robbins again mentions how they were charged of infidelity and atheism by their opponents. And he also describes this doctrine of immateriality, which has become so popular in the professed Christian world as having no foundation for faith or sure ground for hope. Materialism gives us a foundation for faith and a sure ground for hope. What we've covered here is just part of one article by one early SDA, but the pioneers wrote a lot on this subject. There's so much to learn about materialism. If you'd like to read B.F. Robbins article in full, there's a link down below. And if you'd like to see more videos on the subject, you can subscribe to our channel and also click the bell to receive notifications when new content is available. We'll see you next time. Thank you.